the account of the Galloway ghost that frightened a local area and torched a farmhouse. The instance of Galloway's Ringcroft apparition is one of the most scary phantom stories to have arisen out of Scotland. Throughout the span of 90 days in 1695, various ranches and homes around the Ringcroft of Stocking at Achencairn were purportedly tortured by a vindictive soul. Later alluded to as a ghost, the savage nebulous vision is said to have tossed stones at tenants, set structures burning and assaulted and dragged relatives across floors. The account of the whole story was written down by Alexander Telfer, the local minister, apparently in Edinburgh towards the end of December, 1695. Telfer had been the chaplain to the family of Sir Thomas Kilpatrick of Closepin, a known persecutor of Covenanters in Nithsdale, from May, 1687, the time of James VII's Edicts of Toleration, and had been called to Rerick Parish in October, 1688, just a few weeks before the Restoration regime collapsed. As the neighborhood serve, Telfer was unmistakably not an impartial eyewitness of the the Rerick Spectre. Just as exploring and encountering the soul, he was personally associated with a portion of the other key observers. The first of the occasions was reviewed by Telfair Happen in February 1695 at the home of ranch inhabitant Andrew Mackey. We are informed that a surprised Mr. Mackey got up one day to find that the ties that restricted his sheeps had been strangely loosened during the evening. Mr. Mackey continued to make stronger ties, however these two were broken. The sharecropper then, at that point moved the sheep, however was appalled the next morning to discover one of his flock was hanging by a hair at the rear of the house, its feet scarcely touching the ground. Toward the start of March, Telfair tells of stone throwing by the evil spirit, on quite a regular basis, especially on the Sabbath. In the middle of March, the stones had grown in size and the tossing become dangerous and furious, as Mr. Telfair reviews when he visited the evening of the 21st. He expressed, stones and a few different things were tossed at me, I was struck a few times on the sides and shoulder, forcefully with an big stick that even the individuals who were available heard the commotion of the attack. That evening it attacked the bedside and rapped upon the chests and sheets as one calling for access. That evening as I was once at supplication, inclining toward a bedside, I felt something pushing on my arm, I projecting my eyes yonder apparent a little white hand and arm starting from the elbow, however as of now it evanished. It is to be observed, that, in all that was felt and heard, from the first to the remainder of this matter, there was never anything seen only, actually a hand I saw, and a friend of Andrew Mackey's said he saw a little youngster about the age of fourteen years, with dark garments and a cap on his head, yet it vanished and three kids saw the boy sitting at the fireside. It got much worse, as March wore on, with visiting neighbors experiencing awful wounds. Being hit with stones and beaten with wooden posts. Andrew Mackey got a gash to his forehead and scratches, looking like that of fingernails, to his body, while some ended up being dragged across their rooms by the malevolent soul. The children were attacked at night and their pajamas torn off them and they were thrown off their beds in the evenings and were hit so hard that the effect and shouts could be heard through the whole house. The next month, two different pastors, Mr. Ewart of Kells and Mr. Meadow of Cross Michael, showed up at Ringcroft to observe the continuous attacks. Telfair recorded, yet it was merciless against them, particularly by tossing massive stones, it injured Mr. Andrew Ewart twice in the head causing him to bleed, it pulled off his hair piece, and when he was holding his napkin in between his hands, it threw a stone into the napkin, with such force that the napkin went flying. There were none in the house that evening, they decided to go rest by someone else for the night, to get a rest from the savage attacks and anger of the spirit. Furthermore the stones poured down on all who were in the house. And those who tried to enter. Telfair's case were confirmed by the priests present that evening. On April 5 the entity truly started to turn up the suspense when it put a match to the premises. Stones were tossed at the tenants as they hurried out of the stricken house. Getting back to the house the following day, Mrs. Mackey was stunned to find a few little bones and some raw meat wrapped in paper by the entrance. Still the apparition didn't rest. Telfair records that the three days after the 11th of April were the most terrible yet. Not one that came into the house got away from being attacked viciously, 
he recorded. Towards the end of month, the house was set alight over and over, until the evening of the 28th of April when one part of the home imploded, scaring the entire household into terrible shock, making them feel utterly hopeless against the attacks. On the 30th of April, Charles McAllen of Colline, with a few neighbors, were in the barn. As he praying he noticed something dark toward the side of the barn, and it expanded, as though it would fill the entire house. It did and he have a body, looked like a dark cloud, it was alarming to them all, and as it grew, it tossed bare waist, and other mud on them, and started graving several of the people who were in the house by waist, by the arms and different pieces of their bodies so hard that some said, for five days from there on they still thought they felt these grips. One more episode was recorded on 1st May, when the sheep pen was set ablaze. Luckily all the sheep got out alive. This, as it ended up, would be the entity's last attack and there was no more difficulty after that. Closing his text, Telfair expresses, Be calm, be careful, on the grounds that your enemy, Satan, as a thundering lion walketh about looking for who he might eat up. Nothing is left from the Mackey's homestead today, only a lonely old dead tree, that is said to stamp the exact area where the horror attacks took place.